Hey, so let's talk today about the four Stoic virtues, justice, courage, temperance, and wisdom. More specifically, we're going to touch on what each of the four virtues are, but we're also going to talk about simple, practical ways that you can begin to implement and practice the four Stoic virtues in your life. act according to nature. This is a fundamental concept of the earliest of Stoics. Basically what it means is that humans have this unique and precious gift of reason and logic. And ultimately, and more importantly, what that means is that we have almost a responsibility to not squander that gift and to use our ability to use reason and logic to make decisions in accordance with our values and virtues. And this is where the the four Stoic virtues come into play. They're not simple signposts. In fact, they're foundations on which we should base our actions. And that's why today in this video, I'd like to talk mostly about the practicality of the four Stoic virtues without going into too much depth into what each of them are. So the first Stoic virtue I'd like to discuss is wisdom. Wisdom is challenging one's beliefs. It is study. But the Stoics taught that your study is incomplete unless you are able to act upon it. So in consuming philosophy and subjects of self-development, self-improvement, optimization, it is good to read and consume, but it is incomplete unless you are able to translate that into action. Here's a practical tip that I uh, experimented with a few months ago, and I found it was very enriching and enlightening, and, and it sort of expanded my perspective. And that's to read to challenge. So read books by authors who might hold opinions that differ from yours, but Here's an interesting one is that I began to read, I began to actively seek out books that were at least what I perceived to be written for a female audience. I think that we tend to gravitate, whether whether consciously or not, to authors of the same sex. So men tend to gravitate to male authors and vice versa. The same is for women. And some books are written with an audience in mind of a particular sex. It's very enlightening and it can really expand your perspective on on the human condition in general to read books either written by or written for an audience of the opposite sex. So another thing to note about reading is to really study your subjects. Like don't just churn through self-development and self-optimization books. It's, it's tempting to, to read one and pick up another one right away. Take good notes, but more importantly, get these notes into your calendar. Without a schedule or a routine or even better, a habit, but it begins with a schedule, none of this will actually be implemented. If it's not on a calendar, it probably won't happen. You need a mechanism to actually begin to implement and practice what you've learned. So take notes, but then put it in your calendar. Put the most important, the the really crucial, critical, impactful learnings, put them in your calendar with a date and an action item. And then hopefully if you find that these things are of value with repetition and habit building, they will become routine or habit. And then that is when your wisdom has really on full circle in the stoic sense where you've learned something and you've put it into practice. The next stoic virtue I'd like to discuss is courage. I'd like to discuss a very particular aspect of courage. So courage can and almost always is very ordinary. It's very consistent and regular. So To put this into perspective, I'm not talking about the kind of courage required to run into a burning building and save someone or to pull someone out of the wreckage of a 
of a horrible car accident. Because I'm not talking about that kind of courage today because that kind of courage, thankfully, is incredibly rarely required. Um, many of us will go our whole lives without having to um, perform an act of courage where our bodily well-being is, is put into jeopardy. That is very rare. But the kind of courage that I am talking about is working for 30 years in a job that you don't like because you have obligations to your family. That takes courage. To self and to even want to improve oneself, to even pick up a self-development book or to even begin to study compassion and begin to implement it, that takes courage. But I really want to emphasize the persistence, the regularity, and the continuity of these things. That takes courage. It takes courage to get up every single day and put your best foot forward for the greater good, to help others, um, to put others before yourself. This really takes courage to do this consistently, regularly, and persistently. So this is also important to note that I think that this kind of courage requires our attention more than the, the burning building type of courage because it's more pervasive. It, we have opportunities to practice that kind of courage every single day. The next Stoic virtue I'd like to discuss is temperance. So to me, temperance is essentially balance. It's balance between extremes. It's balance between the extremes of pleasure and pain. So at the, at the Mindful Stoic, perhaps the core pursuit of the Mindful Stoic is balance. It's balance between doing and being, between striving and achieving and working, essentially, and simply being simply experiencing the joys of life, taking time to rest, taking time to appreciate the wonder and beauty of life. We need to find a balance between these two extremes because when there is an imbalance and when we tilt toward one end, this causes suffering. So some ways to practice temperance in your life, um, ones at least that, that I can speak to, are to Practice some degree of minimalism, or at least some resistance against marketing and, and consumerism. So really try to only purchase that which you, which you truly need. Another little practical tip for this that I like to implement in my own life is when one thing comes in, one thing goes out. So what I mean by that is if I purchase something and I bring it home that day, then I discard or recycle or, or donate an item of a, of a similar nature that same very day. This is a simple, simple way of ensuring that your house does not become cluttered. And it also really makes you, um, when you're buying that item, that new item, it makes you think, okay, well, what am I going to discard or get rid of as this new item enters my life? So look, another way to implement temperance is to become uh, hyper aware of imbalance and become very rigorous in your attempts to create balance. So look for it anywhere. Look for anything in your life that could be an imbalance and look for, get creative and get, and look for different ways that you could perhaps restore balance to that. So a simple one is something like if you sit all day for your job, you have to sit all day for your job, then stand at night when you're, when, when you're relaxing, when you're reading or watching television, um, stand. Look for ways to find re to, to, to restore that balance. Uh, another practical tip about temperance, because temperance is not just about balance, but it's also about resisting desire, or at least developing a more healthy relationship with desire. So one thing you can do is wait 10 minutes before acting on desires. Wait 10 minutes. Often, the craving or the urge will subside if you wait 10 minutes. So whether that's the urge to, to go to the store and get those that junk food for the, for the movie night, wait 10 minutes on that. Whether it's to call, call, it, um, call it a day a little bit early, even though 
you, you still have some work to do, wait 10 minutes on that. Maybe take a 10 minute break. So these are a few ways that you can implement temperance. Okay, so we get to the final of the four Stoic virtues, and that's justice. Justice is about greater good. It's about making the world a better place. It's as simple as that. I think it's perhaps the... I think it is the Stoic virtue that has a common thread running through all the other virtues. Because, and the Stoics taught, what good is it to have courage if not for the benefit of others? What good is it to have wisdom if it's not making the world a better place? If all of these things are serving selfish ends, they are useless, according to the Stoics. So this is justice. It's about greater good. Um, there's an excellent story of Socrates, actually, who is, um, in a way, a predecessor to the early Stoics, where he was accused of impiety, which is essentially the worship of gods that were not recognized by the state of Athens at the time. He was most likely falsely accused of this by political rivals. Nonetheless, he was tried and convicted of this crime and sentenced to death. Some of his um, close collaborators and colleagues arranged for him to escape the prison and elude his death sentence. He would be, there were arrangements that could have been made for him to be exiled and essentially escape this death sentence. He chose to remain and accept his fate, his ultimate death, despite the fact that he was most likely wrongly accused and convicted. And, and he did. But the thing about that kind of justice, that kind of greater good, is that it is very rare. We should not focus on that kind of extreme self-sacrifice. When The reason I tell that story is to make this point, that we should not look to the stars and take on things much greater than us. We will fail. This is hard. This kind of wanting to make the world a better place is a hard thing. And we will quickly become dissuaded and inactive if we try to take on too much. So we should look for the ordinary ways that we can be compassionate in everyday life. Be present with the people around you. I think that this is the most fundamental starting point for justice in the Stoic sense or compassion in a general sense. Just be with the people around you. Really be with them. Really be present. Listen to them. Often a person just needs to be heard and that's no small act of compassion to really listen. Holding a door for someone is a very low bar for compassion. Let's not look for common courtesies and think, oh, we're being very virtuous and very compassionate because I held the door for someone today. That's a very low bar. A good way to measure your capacity to, to display and practice compassion and the stoic virtue of justice, a good measure is your time. If, if it requires your time and you are there and you are present for someone else, no matter even if it's as simple as just listening to them, even if you don't have a solution to their problem, this is a good measure of your capacity to enact compassion. So the, the takeaway here is to start small and be consistent and be persistent with your display of compassion. So those are the four stoic virtues and just a few ways that I at least thought of that we could begin to practice them. I think that there are, they are a very useful framework. One, because they're easy to remember. There are only four of them. Yet they are very profound. They have underpinnings in, in pretty much any area of life that you can imagine. You could find ways in which these four Stoic virtues are immensely useful.
I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time for a new one.